Uh, kia ora, you can hear me? Uh, kia ora, I'm Helen Moywaka Barnes um, and I'm in Aotearoa, New Zealand. It's night time here, so it's dark. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm with the Shaw Whariki Research Centre. We're part of Massey University based in Auckland. Uh, I'm the director of Whariki, which is a Kaupapa Māori research group, and okay. Professor Sally Caswell is the director of Shaw. Uh, and we work in a process of partnership using Te Tiriti o Waitangi or the Treaty of Waitangi as, as our, our guide. Um, so that's one sort of example of the partnerships that Roz was talking about. We never say that we are in a partnership model, we say we're in that process because it's something we have to constantly work at and question. And you know, as, as Roz was talking in that project, it requires trust, it requires communication, it requires mutual respect and goodwill. Um, and just reflecting on the project that Roz was talking about, you know, all of those things were present in that project, which I think is one of one of the key things for success. Um, and making those decisions about about working with people and about trust, I think, are some of some of the key things that we look at when we enter into those kinds of partnership arrangements. So yeah, um, himihi kiakwe Roz. Um, I'm from the north of the North Island, from a small rural place. Um, Te Kapotai is my um, hapu or my sub-tribe, and Ngākuhi is my iwi. Um, and we work across a very broad range of um, well-being projects and issues. We work a lot in um, tangata whenua, tangata ora, which is Māori, uh, the tangata whenua, so the people of the land, the first people, the indigenous people. Uh, and tangata ora is the well-being of people. So the well-being of the land and the well-being of people being inextricably linked. And increasingly, we, we describe whenua or the land um, as being the determinant of health. Uh, whenua, interestingly, well, it's more than interestingly, it's all part of a concept embedded within our language, um, <clears throat> are many of the concepts that we come to understand the relationships between people, land, and between people and all things. So whenua is also the word for placenta, and hapu, the sub-tribe, is also the word for um, pregnancy. And the womb is te whare tangata, which is the house of people. And there are many other words that, that um, guide us and provide those conceptual and practical ways for us to, to think and to operate. So whenua ki te whenua. When a baby is born, the placenta is returned to the, to the, to the land. So that is the whenua ki te whenua. Um, yeah, uh, just intersectionality, um, I'm not going to quite repeat what I spoke about this morning because I don't really have a script. Um, but I think intersectionality, I alluded in the blog to um, just having a passing acquaintance with it. And that's more in terms of intersectionality as um, a kind of a banner under which we do our work, which isn't, isn't the case. As Roz um, mentioned, we particularly stand within Te Ao Māori, so our ground being um, who we are as Māori and working from, from that viewpoint and from that position. So some of our projects are very much about Māori knowledge, Māori practices, recovering, reasserting, reconnecting those, and others are very much these, these partnership projects. Because it's important for us to have agency in what we do and to be able to push back against um, colonisation and the way in which who we are and what we are has been interpreted and enforced. And it's also important to work with our allies. If we're looking at determinants of health, equity, inequalities, then we all need to work together. And these are accountabilities that we all have. These things aren't just Māori issues, which is sometimes the default position. Um, Colonisation has radically altered what categories we have, and it has created categories. And those categories are the things that um, create the intersections. Uh, I'd just like to talk about a whakatauki, which loosely translated as a proverb. So within these whakatauki, uh, there are concepts and they hold knowledge and they hold guidelines for practice as well. So one whakatauki is he wahine he whenua kangaro te tangata. And that could be translated as through land and through women, men or people are lost. 
and a non-Māori person translated this and took this to be an indication of Māori being a patriarchal society and a violent society that looked on women as property. And property in itself is interesting. The English Axe was introduced here in 1858, which made English laws applicable in this country, and that predated the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi, which was an agreement between Māori and the Crown. So that act actually introduced the idea of property. It introduced the idea of women as property, and it introduced the idea of land as property. So in interpreting these kinds of things in this way, they're creating that idea of women as property. They're creating that idea of land as property, whereas neither were the case. The land is papatunuku, is a woman, and she is the nurturer and sustainer of all things. And women are te whare tangata, and we're the nurturers and sustainers of all things. And without land and without women, there is no life and there is no nurturing. But deciding that these things are property is bringing a very different kind of a lens and concept to the way in which these things are interpreted. Uh, and this, the idea of sexuality too, I mean, these are created categories. And one story is that um, in the north, we had a lot of missionaries who came here and one missionary walked on another missionary who was um, with two Māori men and they were um, having sexual relations. And the one who walked in was very shocked by what he saw was going in on. And the two um, Māori could not understand why he was so shocked by this. They could not understand what the issue was. That sexuality was sexuality and it was expressed in whatever way was, was mutually respectful. So those categories of, of are you straight, are you bi, are you this, are you that, what category can, do you fit into, these ideas of sexuality were created too. So when we work within our worldview, we're not only pushing back against colonization, against inequities, against the powers and the imbalances that have been created, we're pushing back against those very categories themselves as well. But unfortunately, growing up in colonization, we're also very strongly influenced by those ideas of those categories. We can talk about decolonization, but we are also those experiences of colonization. Um, and I just want to acknowledge in terms of COVID, because it's one of the things that's been talked about. Um, you know, here in Aotearoa, we're pursuing a policy of eradication. Um, and I'm very appreciative of um, how things have been working. It's not perfect. There have been um, uh, decisions made, uh, particularly in the beginning, a lot of very quick decisions made where Māori have felt left out of the equation and have had to assert their own agency, put up checkpoints to protect communities, um, and started a COVID Māori working group and trying to get community and voice much more into the policies and practices that are occurring. Uh, and I know that the experiences throughout the world are uh, varied and mixed and very, very difficult. I have an aunt in London and my daughter's partner is in the Bronx in New York. So I acknowledge all the pain and the difficulties that, that people are experiencing. Uh, but there are also some, some things, it has been a catalyst. And so in talking of some of the optimistic things that have been happening, some of the momentum that has happened um, spurred on by COVID, I do that on the understanding that there is this backdrop of incredible challenges and pain and grief that people are experiencing. So mana wahini too, um, with colonization, we tend to have lost the visibility and the names of our women atua, the deities, we could loosely translate that as, it's become very male gendered in terms of those things. And mana wahine, the dignity, the integrity of women comes through our atua line. And that is where the mana, the mana lies. But often these words and these names are not spoken. And that mātauranga, that knowledge is not um, practiced as much. And one of the things that's um, been really revitalized, it was occurring before COVID, but has become much more to the fore, is the um, gathering of that knowledge of birthing, of birth practices, of the roles that whole whānau play when a child comes into the world, what that means, um, and linking this through to um, mana, mana wahine as well, and through to our whakapapa, through to our genealogy, um, where our dignity and where our integrity and where our strength comes from. And I'll just finish off briefly by saying, uh, around me, these are not decorations. 
Um, these are tools and practical tools and concepts. So this is a wahakura. So one of the issues with Māori was great inequities in um, sudden infant death syndrome. So the wahakura was developed by Māori and it's for one of the things, of course, is don't sleep with your baby, sleep baby on the back. But for Māori, not sleeping with baby was not being practised. It was not one of the messages taken up. And so researchers um, work together and here very often practice and research go hand in hand. They're not separated out activities that we need to, and I think someone wrote in one of the things about the limits. And so blurring those lines between who's a scientist, who's a researcher, who's a practitioner, but all coming together to work towards common goals and common aspirations. So this, the Wahakura was developed as part of those research projects and David Tipani Leach was a leading light in that. And there have been no, no deaths of babies using the Wahakura. Behind me, you'll see the harakiki, which is a flax. This is one of our raw, one of our healing plants. It's also the material that's used to weave the wahakura. Um, beside me are Māori instruments. The pumotomoto is one of them, which is also the word for fontanelles. So this was played into um, babies when they were in utero and in the early days, and as ways of imbuing knowledge and ways of passing on well-being to those babies. So all of these things are very inextricably linked, the whenua, women, mana wahine, the recovering, uh, re, um, reconnecting, reasserting and reconnecting with our knowledge and practicing those things. Um, one of the initiatives we're doing here is um, during COVID, families were not able to, to gather. There might be two or three people allowed to be present at births. Women wanted home births, but there weren't always safe spaces for them to do that. So groups of us have got together as practitioners and researchers, and we're developing a very small birthing space here that we hope will become something that could be replicated throughout communities where women can have the sorts of births that they want to have using kaupapa Māori and their practices and their knowledges and ways that work for them. Kia ora.